Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about one new grouping called I2U2. <coughs> we are discussing about I2U2 today. So there is a place or the, there is a region on the planet Earth. It is recognized as the Middle East. This Middle East is located <coughs> between the Asia and the Europe. Okay, it is in between the two continents. The Middle East, the, since ancient times or since medieval times, this area is being called as the Middle East. It contains various countries like Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Egypt, Israel, UAE, various countries are there. This area or this region will always be in news for both negative things and for positive things also. So if you look into the negative aspects, this region will always be in news because of the conflicts. There are territorial conflicts. There are conflicts over the ethnicity. There are conflicts over the different sects within a religion. Okay, Sunni and Shia, uh, Shia sects, they are fighting each other. And there are again civil strifes within the country. There are various uh, civil strifes also. Okay, there are again some of the, in some of the countries like Yemen, there the citizens are trying to overthrow the governments because of the misgovernance. Okay, so these are the negative aspects because of these reasons the Middle East will be in news. But there are various positive things also. So it's a very uh, flourishing oil economy. The whole region is rich in the oil content that is petroleum products okay oil wells this region is known for the oil production and most of the other countries like the usa russia they have to maintain their cordial relations with these countries because of the oil production and apart from this oil production this region is also very near to the some of the choke points in the indian ocean called <coughs> babal mandeb right there is the red sea there are persian gulfs these Persian Gulf and the Red Sea, through these water bodies, lot of trading will take place. Nearly 80% of the goods and services or the goods will be transported uh, through these uh, maritime, <coughs> uh, maritime routes. Okay, So this is the importance or the, these are the positive things of the Middle East. So the India along with other three countries, they have made one grouping called the I2U2. So, very recently it is formed just nine months back so it will become a potential grouping for discussing various issues as well as discussing and finding the solutions for some of the pressing issues in the region as well as the member countries okay so we are going to discuss about this grouping today now this I2U2, it's a validation of New Delhi's nimble foreign policy in West Asia. See, since recent past, India was not having such a cordial relations with the Middle East. So there were just uh, namesake, there were formalities and formal relations were there between some of the Middle East countries. But with the formation of the government at the central level with the formation of government led by the NDA the relations have been improved okay there is a more and more thrust being given to the relations with the Middle East countries <coughs> okay so this foreign policy is the nimble foreign policy that means it is very sensi sensible policy and it is very quick and very well thought policy this is I to you to policy okay so it points to the yet untapped potential in the region. This region, as I have said, that it is rich in the oil uh, oil economy, it is rich in the uh, maritime resources also. So these are the some of the untapped potential areas for other countries like the India. So if the India and other countries, they co uh, collaborate and cooperate with these countries, these you know uh, areas can be tapped properly and more and more resources can be utilized. Okay. So in recent years, India has responded to the new diplomatic and strategic dynamic in the region. So as I have said, since the beginning of the NDA government, especially from the 2014 onwards, there is an increased uh, conversation or increased dialogues between the India and rest of the countries in the Middle East. Why these uh, talkings are going on? So how these are going on? By giving the political recognition to the relationship with Israel. So, so far, since India's independence, the India formally did not visit the or any of the Indian high level dignitaries like the president and the prime minister they did not go to the Israel so this Israel is not recognized by some of the Middle East countries okay so fr from 2014 onwards we started to give importance to the Israel also so engaging more deeply with the Gulf monarchies that means the these Gulf countries they are known for the monarchies that means the king is ruling okay UAE, Yemen, Oman, 
Saudi Arabia. Okay, here the kings are ruling. They are the monarchs. There is an increased dialogue between the ki uh, kings and the Indian uh, delegations. By continuing its relationship with pa Palestine, yes. There is a very pressing issue in the international level that is the conflict between Palestine and the Israel. Since 1948 onwards, this conflict is going on. Some of the countries and most of the Arab countries, they have not recognized Israel, but they recognize the Palestine. Palestine is not being recognized, recognized by some of the world bodies. Okay, So we are giving importance to both the countries. India as a neutral country in the region, it is giving importance to both pa Palestine as well as the Israel. The government has shed its earlier wariness about the U.S.'s role in West Asia. Yes, the U.S.'s presence in the Middle East was uh, <coughs> recognized or it was understood as the uh, disturbing event because it wanted to establish its, its power in the Middle East. So, in the Indian Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, USA is expanding its power. It is trying to hold uh, over the uh, business in the Middle East and the uh, Pacific Ocean routes. But now the USA's role is not uh, being treated as the threatened one. The India has recognized the USA's role in the region as cordial. Now it, it, the USA's presence in the Middle East will boost the India's investment in the Middle East also. So these are the some of the perceived changes in the, the policy to India's policy towards the Middle East. In this way the di dynamic has been changed. Now before going into the I to U to initiative, I want to give one more uh, fact related to the Abraham Accords of 2020. This Abraham Accord is nothing but the agreement between the Arab countries and the Israel. As I have said, since the 1948, since the end of the World War I, these Jews were facing a lot of trouble in Europe. So America and the UK, they made one place for the Jews to reside in. So Israel was recognized by their native uh, homeland. The, all the Jews were sent to the Israel. So this has created the conflict with the other native people like the Palestine. So Palestine and Israel, they are in conflict since long time, since the 1948 onwards. Okay. So to see, because of this non-recognition of the Israel, the Arab countries have become the hostile towards the Israel. So Israel in fact has fought various wars with the neighbors. Okay. So now through these Abraham Accords, the tensions has been uh, tensions have been reduced. Okay. The other Arab countries have recognized the existence of the Israel as a sovereign country. Okay. So these Abraham Accords give the recognition to the Israel country. The first country gave the, the recognition was the UAE. UAE through the Abraham Accords in 2020 recognize the Israel. This Abraham Accords are brokered by the USA. USA <coughs> played a role of uh, intermediator. It enhanced the dialogues between the Arab countries and the Israel. Okay, In presence of the United States, these accords have been signed. Okay, This accord, these accords have led to, led Israel formally normalizing the diplomatic ties with the UAE, Morocco, Bahrain in the region. Okay, So, uh, from hostile relations of Israel with the surrounding neighborhood, now the relations have been diplomatically normalized. Okay, <coughs> These accords have marked an important shift in the stance of West Asian countries on Israel. Yes, since they were not recognizing the Israel, now they have started to recognize the in Israel as the sovereign country. This is the shift in the West Asian countries stance. So this is the 2020 uh, year 2020. So in this year, this is the historical moment. He is the Israel uh, Prime Minister. He is the UAE uh, authority. So both of them have signed the Abraham Accord in presence of the USA President. Okay. Now before again going into the deeper into the discussion, I want to ask you one question related to the mapping. So which of the following Middle East country does not share its border with the Saudi Arabia. So among these Yemen, Oman, Iraq and Lebanon, you have to tell me which country does not share its border with the Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now let's come to proper discussion related to the I2, U2. So this is a quadrilateral group or okay, it is a quadrilateral forum. What is quadrilateral? That means it contains the four members. Who are they? These four members in I2, U2 are India, Israel, UAE and USA. 
United Arab Emirates and the United States of America. So these are the four members in the I2, U2. This I2 stands for India and Israel. That means their name starts with I, two I's, that is I2. U2 means USA and UAE. So because of this nomenclature, because of the initial uh, words, of, initial letters of these countries, the group uh, groupings name has been given as the I2, U2. Okay. This sometimes this I2 U2 grouping is also referred to as West Asian Quad. Okay, there is a one more grouping. It is a militarily and strategically very important group called as the Quad. Okay, so Quad or quadrilateral. So this is strategic grouping. That this grouping has the four members again: the India, Japan, Australia, and USA. These four countries they. Uh, co co cooperate and collaborate each other they want to establish the peace in the maritime uh, boundaries especially in the pacific as well as the in indian ocean okay so this is different this quad is different okay but this i2 u2 is referred to as the west asian quad okay so this was launched in the year 2021 october month 2021 it was launched by the all the foreign ministers of four countries okay so following the abraham accords of 2020 so abraham accord 2020 made the relation uh, with the israel very normal okay after recognition of the israel this new initiative or the i2 u2 was started by the foreign ministers of the all the four member countries okay so why why they have started this grouping to discuss or to deal with the issues related to the maritime security infrastructure and the transport so this was the initial purpose of uh, creating this grouping okay so this is the beginning of uh, this grouping now when the grouping was formed it was not called as the i2 u2 its original name was different it was named as the international forum for economic cooperation ifec okay it was initially called as the international forum for economic cooperation now its name has been changed into i2 u2 okay so there is no military angle to their cooperation yes though it is a quad grouping so there is no involvement of the military it is purely a developmental grouping they will uh, talk about the infrastructure development food security energy security and various other issues but they are not uh, involving militarily that means it is not military related grouping there are various other military related grouping like the nato warsaw pact various groupings are there but this is not the such military grouping okay it is not a military grouping what are the aims of this grouping the aim is to discuss the common areas of mutual interest to strengthen the economic partnership in the trade and investment in our respective regions and beyond so trade strengthening the economic partnership in the trade and investment see they are trying to expand their trade they want they want to expand their investments in the each other countries okay this is the main aim of this grouping the principal intention the, again one more intention is to mobilize the private sector capital and expertise and deploy it for many areas of economic cooperation yes not only the governments are involved in this grouping but also the private players are also being taken into consideration for developing the uh, various infrastructure projects as well as other developmental issues okay they want to mobilize the private sector capital and the expertise that means the money as well as the experience these private players have gained okay now there are so wh what are the various areas of economic cooperation they are the infrastructure development okay low carbon development uh, avenues for industries yes they want to establish the eco-friendly industries that means the, who, the industries which emit low and low carbon dioxide improving the public health okay promote the development of critical emerge critical emerging and green technologies that means if you look into the these areas of co economic cooperation majorly they are uh, aimed at the issues related to the climate change as well as the development okay apart from these economic cooperation there are six major areas of cooperation okay there are these are six very specified areas in the, in this grouping okay one is water energy transportation space health and food security so this year's 
समिट वॉज द फर्स्ट समिट दिस समिट वॉज एम्ड और इट इट वॉज मेजरली रिलेटेड विथ द फूड सिक्योरिटी ओके सो दिस इयर द समिट वॉज कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड मेनली ऑन द फूड सिक्योरिटी दिस इज वन ऑफ द सिक्स एरियाज ऑफ कोऑपरेशन बट रेस्ट ऑफ द फाइव आर वाटर एनर्जी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन स्पेस एंड द हेल्थ ओके सो दीज आर द मेजर एरियाज ऑफ कोऑपरेशन देन बाय इन्वॉल्विंग इन दिस ग्रुपिंग how the different countries get the benefit what is the importance of this grouping for individual country let us look into that what is the advantage for usa is that this grouping will enable the america to expand and restore the partnerships that suffered during the donald trump regime so today the us is being run uh, administered by the president joe biden before the biden he, there was a president called the donald trump he did not maintain the cordial relations with the all the arab world countries except the saudi arabia and the israel okay so there were some damages to the bilateral relations of america with the middle east countries now this grouping will enable the usa to restore the damaged relations with the uh, <coughs> middle east countries okay for india what are the advantages the it allows this grouping allows the india to play the gr greater global role and deepen its ties with the middle east in an area it views significant because of its energy and economic interests yes so this grouping will enable india to cooperate more and more deeper deeper and deeper that means deeper role it this grouping will provide the deeper role for india to play in the region then what is the advantage for uae that is united arab emirates it will provide an opportunity to get an edge in the persian gulf yes persian gulf again it is a strategic route in the maritime uh, boundary so uae will get the uh, an edge that means so it will have a more say in transportation of the goods and services as well as the oil uh, as a good in the region okay then israel so it will give this grouping will give the israel a chance to improve its ties with the arab world yes so far the israel relations were not that good with the surrounding countries which are the arab world countries okay so this grouping by having the mutual trust by you know interacting in the cooperative manner the israel can become the uh, trusted friend with the neighboring countries okay this is the opportunity for india in this way the four members will get the different benefits from this grouping now let's the let us analyze or let us understand more about the significance of this grouping for india okay so india's west asian policies so first significance is west asia policy so until now so far india's west asian policies have largely insisted on keeping its bilateral relationships separate from each other so this is for the first time india is having the multilateral cooperation with the middle east so far yes india has the uh, relations with the middle east countries but they are the bilateral in nature that means country to country relations are there but there are no multiple country relations with india that means multilateral uh, cooperation is not there this i2u2 is providing for the first time the multilateral platform for india to interact with the various countries in the region okay then advantage from the abraham accords yes india will get the advantage of the abraham uh, accords to deepen the engagement with israel without uh, risking its ties with the uae and other arab states see before the abraham accords it was a very uh, difficult for india to take a particular stand against or for a particular country in the middle east region for example if india takes the stand uh, for israel so other countries like the uae was not happy okay if the india was taking the uh, positive stance with respect to the saudi arabia okay the israel was not happy with this india's stance okay now because of the abraham accords that means the normalcy of the relations between israel and the surrounding arab world it has become very easy for india to uh, have the dialogues with all the countries without you know driving or without uh, getting the uh, what you call without getting the criticism for israel or other countries in the region okay then benefits with respect to the market yes india is the second largest populated country it has vast you know geography also okay that means it has a, ma a major market for all type of goods and services in india okay so 
India is a massive consumer market. It's a frontline producer of high technology and highly sought after goods as well as that will attract the investors from the West Asia. So because of the resources in India, because of the consumer market in India, it will attract the investors from the Middle East. Okay. So in that way, India will provide the very best market for the investors from the Middle East region. Now, thrust to geopolitical presence. Yes, it will boost the India's geopolitical presence in the Middle East. This I2U2 will boost India's geopolitical presence, especially in West Asia. And India will strategically and economically establish itself as a world power. Yes. So, India wants to become the world power. Now, from underdeveloped country, now we have become the developing country. Okay. There are efforts to get the UN's uh, permanent seat. Okay. There are efforts to... Uh, get the membership in the various other uh, very recognized organizations in the world okay so it is moving towards the superpower it's it takes a lot of time but step by step in the one or the other time it will become the world player okay so this i2 youtube will provide a provide a platform for india to express its stance or express its opinion at the global level <coughs> now indian diaspora and the remittances yes in the Middle East region, there are 8 to 9 million Indians working, okay, in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Leb Lebanon, Israel, you name any of the Middle East countries, in such countries, there are Indians, how many Indians, 8 to 9 million Indians are working there, okay, they are sending the, their earned money back to India, okay, this earned money, whichever they are sending back to India, it is called as the remittance, okay, with respect to the with respect to earning the remittance, this reason is very important. Okay, Indian communities in West Asia have significant impact upon the Indian economy through inward remittances. Yes, it is called as the inward remittances. But the foreigners who are working in India, they will also send their income back to their native country. That is called as the outward remittance. Okay, this is the inward remittance. <coughs> According to the United Nations report on the international migration, this is the, two th the 2017 data. With this, uh, with reference to this data provided by the United Nations, so remittances, that is the inward remittances from the Gulf into India were 38 billion dollars. That means it's a huge amount. Indian economy is getting benefit from such inward remittances from the Indian diaspora living in the Middle East. Okay, so again here India has the lot of significance. Okay, this is what the I2U2 will provide the India the various advantages. Okay, now on July 14th, the first summit of I2U2 took place. Okay, since its formation in the 2021, this is the first time this grouping is sitting together. Okay, all the members are sitting together and they are involved in the dialogue. Okay, so this is the virtual meeting. So they did not physically meet. This meeting was virtual. Okay, it was held on the July 14th, 2022. Okay, with respect to this grouping, the Prime Minister of India had said that this summit has established a positive agenda yes a positive agenda and its a framework is a good model for practical cooperation in the face of increasing global uncertainties yes the prime minister of india has expressed a very positive note on the i2u2 and he is telling that this grouping has created the positive agenda that means there are various potential areas in which the countries can cooperate each other and they can develop uh, each other mutually okay so when in a time where there is increasing global uncertainties yes there is a, a supply shocks of oil there is a conflict between israel sorry ukraine and uh, russia there are various conflict between uh, saudi arabia and uh, iran right there are proxy wars between uh, america and uh, russia so such uh, events will pose the uncertainty about the global politics okay but this grouping the prime minister is telling that in such a uncertain timings this i2u2 is providing the positive agenda for development of the all the member countries okay so these are the members the prime minister of india the uh, us president okay the uae king and the israel uh, israeli prime minister now Yes, the first uh, meeting of this I2U2 took place. But what are the outcomes? What did, did these leaders discuss in this summit? Let us look into that. 
the uae has promised 2 billion dollar plan for integrated food parks this is very important so i have said that the first meeting of this grouping is aimed at the food security so food security is one of the major uh, areas of cooperation okay so in this area the uae has agreed to give the 2 billion dollar uh, investment for india in the area of integrated food parks that means uae will establish the food parks in india with the assistance of america and israel private sectors yes along with the government here the private players are also involving so in this integrated food park project the uae will provide the financial assistance but the america and the israel they will provide the expertise from the private sectors okay so this is what is agreed and the second point is that the usa will set up the 300 megawatt hybrid renewable energy project yes one is the integrated food park project by uae another one is the hybrid renewable energy project this project will be implemented by the united states of america at the cost of around 330 million dollar okay so these are the very important two projects in different sectors okay both of them are aimed at uh, some of the securities first is aimed at the food security and second one is aimed at the energy security right so this hybrid renewable energy means hybrid means here the wind energy as well as the solar energy combined together they are called as the hybrid renewable energy the usa has agreed for such project okay these food parks will incorporate climate smart technologies to reduce the food waste conserve the fresh water and employ renewable energy resources yes these food parks they will not be the normal food uh, food parks they are aimed at the eco friendly measures okay then the hybrid renewable energy this project is expected to help india to establish itself as a global supply chain hub in the renewable space yes india is a in short of energy yes there are shutdowns there are load sheddings on uh, electricity supply but once the india becomes the uh, self-reliant on the energy production it can become the net exporter of the energy also so in this way if the more and more investment comes in the renewable energy sector india can one uh, once in future it may become the global player or it may become the one of the link in the global uh, hub of renewable space okay now third one third uh, the point of discussion in this summit was the science based solutions to enhance the food security okay this will build more innovative inclusive and science based solutions to enhance the food security and sustainable food systems yes this food security not only involves involve the, the establishing the food parks but it also involves the need based production or the area based production or cluster based approach towards the crop production okay so b based on such scientific methods based on such innovative uh, methods india can achieve the food security or it, it can enhance the food security okay the next point of discussion was agriculture innovation mission for climate initiative so it is called as the aim for climate okay in short aim for climate so what is this aim this aim is nothing but the agriculture innovation mission okay this aim climate is already agreed by usa and some other middle east countries now india has said or it has expressed its, its willingness to join in this dialogue or in this initiative okay so fifth one is support for abraham accord yes all the countries they openly said that they will give the recognition to uh, uh, <coughs> abraham accord and they will support the whatever the initiatives taken under the abraham accord okay so these are the various points which have been discussed in the first summit of i i2 u2 yes uh, it's a very good initiative but what are the challenges for this initiative let us look into that okay what are the challenges for israel first abraham accords are a major breakthrough yes it's a very positive development with respect to the israel but the other states in the region are still reluctant to maintain the friendly relations with israel only few of the countries like the uae bahrain sudan okay they have uh, uae they have given the recognition to israel but what about the other countries in the region they have not recognized the israel still they are reluctant to have the 
cordial relations with Israel. This is one of the challenges for this I2U2 group. Okay, again, Israel Palestine conflict since long running conflict, it will be again become a major area of concern for this grouping. Okay, internal conflicts of the Arab world. Yes, I have said in the beginning that this Arab world is known for the negative aspects also. One of such aspect is the interstate conflicts. The very well known conflict is between Israel and the Saudi Arabia, sorry, Iran and Saudi Arabia. So these are ideologically different countries. The different sects within the uh, Muslim religion is creating tension between these two countries. That is between Sunnis and the Shias. Okay, these two groups they are fighting each other. Okay, so this fight may become the challenge for I two U two. Next, the possible splitting of the countries. Yes, because of this ideological fightings, because of the proxy wars, these countries may split among themselves and they can make their different groupings instead of giving importance to the I two U two. In which way they can split? The internal conflicts in the Arab world will possibly lead to the significant partners of India like Iran split from the former into another group. Yes, India now has the very good relation with the Iran as well as with the Saudi Arabia also. Though they are fighting with each other, we have maintained the neutral relationship with uh, these two countries. But if the ideological wars or if the internal conflicts in these countries, they, if they widen, if they deepen, it will. Uh, uh, affect the India's relations with these countries also. Okay, The developing situation might lead to the creation of two groups. These internal conflict, this is the developing situation. That means these conflicts are becoming more and more complex. Okay, So if they become more and more, if they develop more into the different uh, difficult situation, these countries will split. Okay, So in what way they will split? One group may be supported by China, one group may be supported by USA. Okay, the China supported grouping might be the Pakistan. So this is from Asia, South Asia. Okay, Russia, Iran and Turkey. They also they will collaborate with each other. Second grouping will be India you will be taking the side of USA along with Israel and the UAE. So these are the different groupings. They may be formed instead of I2U2, which is a neutral platform to discuss. If the countries are split into such a group, ideological groupings, it will become a very, very uh, threat for the uh, <coughs> pursued advantages of this I2U2. Okay, these are some of the challenges. One more challenge is China's expanding role in the Middle East. Yes, not only the China is expanding in the Indian Ocean, not only in the South China Sea, it is also expanding itself in the Middle East region also. In what way? It has developed the ports or the two ports in the Israel. One is Haifa, Haifa port okay, and another port is Ashdod port. These two ports are being supported uh, financially by the China or it has developed these two ports. In this way, the China is expanding its presence in the region. It will become a uh, problem for this grouping. Okay, the UAE was one of the first countries that got the Huawei. This is the Chinese multinational company Huawei, the very popular company. So UAE, it got. The, this is the first country to get the financial assistance for the from the uh, Huawei for its 5G project. That means China is very uh, quickly capturing the market. It is very uh, quick enough to. Uh, take the advantage of the countries in this region. Okay, in this way, it may become very challenging for other countries like especially the USA and India to maintain the uh, cordial relations with these countries. Okay, if the China becomes a major player in this uh, area, the I2, U2 may lose its significance. Okay, these are the challenges with respect to the I2, U2. Now, what should be the way forward? Yes, there are challenges, there are other difficulties are also there. But what has to be done? What is the way forward for the countries? Yes, they have to take the opportunity very seriously and they have to grab the opportunity. Fundamental interests of India like the energy security, food security, workers, that is uh, the diaspora, trade, investment and maritime security lie in this region. See, if you look into these terms like the energy security, food security, trade, diaspora, okay, investment. So these are the potential areas, all of these potentials are, you know, uh, uh, they are lying in this region, okay. We have to tap this region and we have to take the opportunity of all these positive things, okay. This is the way forward for India. Then mutual cooperation among the four countries. 
balancing the rival countries diplomatically and strategically in order to maintain the friendly relations with each other yes some of these countries they may not be having the cordial relations with israel we have to maintain the neutrality diplomatic diplomatically as well as strategically we have to maintain the neutrality so that all the countries can trust the india and there can be better development okay so this is again one more area of um <clears throat> cooperation then reassuring the other partners in west asia what to reassure so there are two partners like the iran and egypt they are also part of the west asia though egypt is in africa sometimes it is you know included in the west asia or middle east region okay these are the two countries they these two countries need to be reassured that this new arrangement is not aimed at them so when the grouping in the middle east in this grouping the countries from other areas like the north america usa is coming from north america again india is coming from the south asia if the countries from different areas are coming and they are making the group in the middle east so rest of the other countries may feel threatened okay so we have to reassure such countries that this uh, grouping is not aimed at destabilizing or it is not aimed at destroying any of the economic or social aspects of these two countries okay iran and the egypt because for e india iran is a important in relation to the present context of afghanistan okay whatever the conflict is going on in the afghanistan so it is not you know uh, good for india and the whole southeast uh, sorry south asian region okay so because this area is being run by the taliban which once upon a time was recognized as a terror organization by the united nations and the america okay so, so when the afghanistan is in turmoil so we have to take the confidence of the other countries to maintain the peace and order in the region okay so for india iran is an important in relation to the present context of afghanistan then egypt has friendly relations with the all the four countries in this alliance but it must be reassured that it will not be impacted economically or politically yes the usa has put sanctions on the iran for the oil export india is friendly with the usa also so iran may feel that if the usa and the india collaborate with each other in the region so it may think that these two countries are you know trying to destabilize the iranian economy but it is the duty of india and other members in the itu to that the era there is no necessary for iran to think in that lines okay so this kind of assurance should be given to the egypt and the iran so let us come to the question initially i asked one question that which of these following four countries does not share its border with the saudi arabia okay that is the lebanon the yemen oman and the iraq they share the border with the saudi arabia except the lebanon okay this is the jordan iraq the qatar oman yemen okay all of them they share border with the saudi arabia but here it is lebanon okay so between israel and the syria there is a small country called as the lebanon which shares its border with the mediterranean sea okay so this lebanon lebanon does not share its border with the saudi arabia okay so this is the answer for the previous question okay this is all about the i2u2 initiative thank you very much for watching this video